Hi you guys, so the other day I posted a video um, reviewing Gabby Hanna's newest poetry book called Dandelion and I didn't get through the whole poetry book uh, for the sake of time and also I hadn't finished reading it yet but I had so many requests asking me to do a part two to that video and by so many requests I had literally one request but you know we'll just go with it. Um, anyways, so I had one request to do a part two, and so here I am, and as I'm filming this right now, that video has 599 views, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm viral. Um, but anyways, let's just get into it. I'm not going to waste near as much time as I did last time, and I do want to make this video shorter because I know most people aren't going to watch a long video and the last video was a little bit long. Um, so let's just get into it. So the first poem I want to talk about is on page 91 and it's called Perhaps. It says, Today is the day that I let go of maybe. No fantasies or daydreams of what may be. Today is the day that I let go of maybe. Because last night was the last night you let go of me. So, I like that poem just because it kind of reminds me of those type of relationships where you break up and you get back together and, like, this is essentially saying, like, that's the last time we're going to do that. Like, we're not going to do that again. Like, you let go of me last night for the very last time and that's it. Anyways, so I do like that poem. On page 92, Gabby Hanna has this illustration and it says I'm sad and then it says why and then it says because I have nothing to be sad about and that's kind of a theme with Gabby Hanna I've noticed it reminds me a lot of the very last poem in her book called tragedy and it's right here so in this poem called tragedy she's talking about how she is too happy and she prefers to be sad but at the same time, she's enjoying what it's like to be happy and she just kind of wants to, to dwell in this moment for a while, but she doesn't want it to last forever. And I've noticed that's kind of a theme with Gabby Hanna. She talks about that quite a bit in her book and also in her music. She has her song called Happy where she's singing about uh, she's too happy and she doesn't know what to do with herself and she can't write a song because she's She's only written sad songs, so she doesn't know what to do. Um, and she also has the song called Medicate, where she's talking about uh, turning your tragedy into a work of art. So I, I know that's definitely a theme with Gabby, but I think that's, for a lot of people who are creative, I think a lot of people find their creativity within their sadness, and a lot of people are able to create better art when they're feeling sad. I think a lot of times people are more inspired when they're feeling sad or depressed. Um, if you look at people like Adele, she's written some incredible songs, but all of her incredible songs are really sad breakup songs. Um, so I think that's that's what she's alluding to in a lot of her, her writing, whether it's music or poetry. And for me, I can definitely relate to that as well. Moving on. Okay, so speaking of Gabby Hanna's music, the book obviously is called Dandelion, and Dandelion is a poem in this book, which is essentially some of the lyrics of her song Dandelion, which was released a few months ago. So I'm going to try to read it just to see if I can read it without turning it into the melody of the song. So it says... When I was a little girl, my mama said to me, What's your favorite flower, darling? I'll get you the seed. I said, Dandelion. Dandelion. That one's so pretty. She said, Child, that one's not a flower. That one's just a weed. I still love those mellow yellow petals anyway. What's the thing they say about a rose by any other name? Then my fragile flower turned into a ball of gray. So I took a breath and made a wish and blew them all away. Anyways, I don't really have much to say about that because I've already listened to the song a hundred times. I do like the song. Um, yeah, moving on. This poem is on page 106. It's called Morning. And if you look at the spelling, oh, and by the way, I'm no longer using gas station napkins in receipts as bookmarks. I'm using a, a piece of junk mail that I cut up. 
This one is called Mourning. I don't know if it's focused. It's spelled kind of interesting. It's spelled as if you are mourning a loss, not as if you were saying good morning. And it reminds me a lot of her poem called Yawn. And it says, I fucking hate nights like this. Nights after long, productive, exciting days, days of distraction and people and art and exercise and fresh air and sunshine and food to eat and maybe even happiness. The type of day that makes you eager to see what tomorrow brings. The type of day that makes you so hopeful for the future that it scares you to your core. The type of day that makes you thank God you're alive. But then the day is over and the streets are quiet and your mind is screaming. The people are gone and the house feels bigger and you feel smaller, much smaller. They left you alone here with you, knowing how you treat you when no one's looking. Pacing from room to room, searching for something, someone, keeping your body busy so you can rest. Racing from doom to gloom, yearning for something, someone, anyone to blame, but yourself for once. I fucking hate nights like this. I'll be better in the morning. So that reminds me a lot of her poem called Yawn. And... To me, it's just, uh, again, it's like you're having a, a really good day, you're getting stuff done, you're being productive, like you feel okay, but then the night comes around and you're stuck with just you and your thoughts and you're alone and you're reminded of what it's like to be alone and it's just not a very good feeling. So that's why I like that one. This is another short one. It's on page 108, it's called text, and it says, I blocked your number so I could stop waiting on a message that would never come. So for me, I, I like I've definitely been in those relationships or situationships where you you kind of like rather than giving yourself that false hope that they might reach out to you or they might respond you know they're not going to and so you just go ahead and block them so you you can stop thinking about it and you're not setting yourself up for failure like oh maybe they will reach out no you just go ahead and block them and you don't even have to think about it again like this isn't world-renowned poetry but it's just stuff that i relate to and i understand what she's saying and for that reason alone i like it so this poem on page 143 is called blind and she has one side of it where it's in braille and the other side is obviously in English writing. And the reason why I wanted to talk about this one is just because she wrote it for her friend Molly who is a creator on YouTube who is blind. It says, What a cursed blessing to be forced into guessing the contents of a heart without the costume of pride. A beast or a beauty all comes down truly to not what can be seen but what festers inside no shallow precipitation means no misconception you can't be distracted by the vanity dance it makes me wonder who chooses this power of the shield from deception if given the chance so obviously it's talking about like seeing someone or something for what's on the inside and not having this whole facade on the outside. But I just thought it was interesting to talk about because Molly's a, a content creator on YouTube and I know she's really popular. So I just thought it was kind of cool that Gabby uh, is friends with her and she wrote a poem about her. This poem is called Assault and it's definitely one of the heavier poems, if not the heaviest poem in the book. It says, I never told anyone because I accepted a fifth glass of wine. I never told anyone because maybe I was a little too flirtatious at dinner. I never told anyone because I let him into my apartment. I never told anyone because maybe I could have been a little louder with my stop and a little firmer with my no. I never told anyone because I didn't have any bruises. I never told anyone because I didn't hit him. I didn't try to push him off because I froze when my words weren't powerful enough because he was stronger than me. I felt it in his weight. I never told anyone because no one wants to hear the story 
of the girl who made bad choices and didn't fight back. Thank you for letting me tell you. So, she's clearly talking about a a situation where she was at least sexually assaulted, at worst, raped. And I'm not going to talk about why I relate to that, but unfortunately, I think too many people have been in situations like this. And I think a lot of times, you know, when you see how sexual assault or rape is is portrayed on TV or in movies, a lot of times it's this being kidnapped and held at gunpoint. And although that's terrible, most of the time, or a lot of times, it's situations like this where maybe you were just taken advantage of and, you know, you asked him to stop and he didn't listen and he or she did what they wanted. And sometimes you don't even know how to process it because maybe they were really nice. Maybe they did take you out to dinner. Maybe they did buy you a drink. Maybe they even reached out to you afterwards. And I think I think it's good to have stories like this where although there's no there's no ideal situation to be sexually assaulted. You know, every every sexual assault is terrible and disgusting and it absolutely shouldn't happen. But I think it's good to talk about the situations where, you know, we were on a date. They were really nice. We did get along. We had a good time. Um, and I'm sorry to Gabby and to anyone who has to go through situations like that. Um, a poem on, so there's another poem on the next page after that, and it's called Standards, and I'm not going to read it because it's honestly really hard for me to read the white writing on black pages, but I like that one as well. Every time I hold my book up, more bookmarks fall out, so um, I guess that is the universe's way of keeping this video shorter. So there's this poem on page 172, and it's called Rides. It says, I've never understood suicide, but I understood it today. Until now, it was incomprehensible. How can life get better if you're dead? What can be so bad that the alternative is eternal nothing? Don't get me wrong, I fantasized about dying just like everyone else but I hadn't considered doing it myself. Never in a million years could I imagine doing it. But today, I was like, oh. I'm sad today. Well, I'm sad most days, but I'm sad today as well. Someone said to me, it'll get better, it always does. And I thought, well, yeah. And then it'll get worse, it always does. I mean, things couldn't keep getting better if they didn't keep getting worse. So basically, what you're saying is, things will get better because they got worse at some point, but they will get better again. And I know this because things got worse, and this is true. Life will always be an up and down, a merry-go-round of good, then bad, then better, then worse. But what if your worst is worse than your better? What if your best isn't better than your worst? And what if you fall much farther than you flew? If you try to climb out, but you get buried first. So, I never understood suicide, but I understood it today. I understood the hopelessness, the exhaustion, the nausea from all the jerky turbulence, and the jerky breaths. I understood that telling someone it always gets better is just a reminder of how bad it's been, and how bad it can get again, but please, for the love of God, or whatever it is you do or don't believe in, please don't. Please live. Please. Um, so, wasn't expecting to get all emo with this one, but um, this poem, uh, I can definitely relate to it personally from uh, things... I've experienced myself or emotions I felt myself, but um, also if you know someone who 
did take their own life, a lot of times you you think to yourself or you say out loud things like, like this where it says, what can be so bad that the alternative is eternal nothing? And uh, in like two days actually, it's going to be the 10 year anniversary of my mom's suicide. So that's definitely something that's been dwelling on my mind a lot lately and then reading this poem definitely makes me think about that even more. Um, but I think what really gets to me in this poem is just where she says, whatever it is you do or don't believe in, please don't, please live, please. I wish that was something I could say to my mom right now, but I can't. So if anyone is in a place where they're contemplating ending their own life, I hope reading something like this makes you feel better. So this poem is called Gemini and it's on page 179 and it says the best thing that's happened bad for your health an angel from heaven all in one breath. You tell me you hate me but trap me here with you because you love me so deeply until my death. The perfect woman a dumb fucking bitch who am I today? I hate to ask but I look into your eyes and I can't figure out which face is you, and which is the mask. So, you know what's really interesting to me is it's called Gemini, and I'm not, like, big into zodiac signs, but every time I hear anyone talk about Geminis, this poem, like, kind of describes it perfectly. No hate if you're a Gemini. Like I said, I, I don't really know anything about zodiac signs, but I think this just goes to talk about those type of relationships, again, where you don't know what it's going to be from day to day and it's like one second you love me and the next second you hate me and I never know where I stand with you and unfortunately I think that's um, an experience that a lot of us have been through and so I like that she talks about it. It's something that it's like it's not so like how do I say it? It's not it's not like she's talking about this like obscure profound experience it's it's something that's pretty basic it's like we're, we're just talking about a, a shitty relationship but like we've all had shitty relationships whether it's with you know the person we're dating or a work relationship or a family member so something like that like even I can even relate to that with my relationship that I have with my mother where it was like she was up and down and up and down and Sometimes relationships are like walking on eggshells and that's kind of what she's describing here is you just don't know where you stand. So I appreciate that poem. All right, you guys. So that wraps up the reviews of Gabby Hanna's book, Dandelion. I really enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed these videos. The two people that are watching it, I really appreciate it. I hope you guys all take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And again, stop with the hating. Like, she's not that bad. You guys, stop hating. Go get yourselves a copy of Dandelion if you so feel inclined. I do recommend it. And also, um, maybe I'll do a review of her book, Adult Lessons. I know that came out a long time ago, but I like that book as well. And I have some things to say about it. So uh, maybe I will do that. Anyways, you guys, bye.